Poor Stacy is an underground emo rapper you probably haven't heard of before this video, or maybe you have become aware of him from his multiple high profile features he's managed to land over the past few years. Whether you've heard of him or not, I guarantee after this video is over and you hear the dark depths that he's sunk to, you won't soon forget him. Without further ado, let's look at the life and career of Poor Stacy. Poor Stacy's real name is Carlito Milford, so please excuse me if I call him Poor Stacy throughout this video. He was born on March 15th, 1999 in Florida. From a young age, she was exposed to multiple types of music. His father even trained him to play multiple instruments as well. He was mostly interested in rock and metalcore music though, as the local scene was thriving in his hometown. He would begin making his own music in 2016 under the name Lido Zantana, and would drop his tracks on SoundCloud. He would later change his name to Poor Stacy though, named after a famous skateboarder. His first song was named Visuals. It didn't immediately pick up steam, but Stacy didn't let that discourage him. He would continue to drop songs on SoundCloud throughout the year. His first track that was able to get any buzz at all was called Corpse Bride. It would gain 30k views over the course of a few months and getting him buzz in his local area. He would follow that up with his first mixtape, Cure for Anxiety. This project created enough noise around it that it was able to draw the attention of one of Internet Money's producers, Nick Mira. The two would link up soon after and begin to work together. Stacy would then drop his track, Make Up. With the push from Internet Money combined with the fan base he already built for himself, the song was able to get 35k views in under 24 hours. After the success of this song, Stacy was able to sign with 10k Projects, which got him connections with multiple big name artists. He was featured on Ian Dore's Industry Plant album as they were both rappers under the 10k Projects umbrella. The two would then go on to tour together in early 2020 and he would drop his own song with Ian Dore as a feature. This was the leading single for Stacy's debut album, The Breakfast Club. This album did fairly well for him in the underground scene and helped push Stacy into the industry as a whole. After the release of Breakfast Club, he was able to feature on multiple big name artist songs. First was Headspace with the band Fame on Fire followed by a track with Travis Baker called Train Spotting. Then he would drop the deluxe version of Breakfast Club, and one of the bonus tracks added to this release, Darkest Nights, would actually appear in a movie, Bill and Ted Face the Music. This was a big win for Stacy as the film's soundtrack actually got nominated for a Grammy. After this, he would release a self-published mixtape without the help of his label called I Don't Rap. This was a switch up from Stacy's normal style, as it was just a straightforward rap mixtape as opposed to his regular punk style. He even claimed at one point he didn't see himself as a rapper, and he only really got into rap to try and gain more popularity. After that tape dropped, he began to release single after single to hype the release of his second album, Party at the Cemetery. He would then drop a second Travis Baker produced track, Hills Have Eyes, and this is actually where I first became aware of him. In 2021, his second album dropped to very minor buzz from the industry. His fans seemed to have enjoyed it though, and after that, Stacy continued to tour around Europe, He'd appear at rock concerts, and release a few singles here and there. And that pretty much seems to be the story of poor Stacy, just an underground artist who got a bit of buzz in the industry and faded away as fast as he blew up. There's some evidence that 10k Projects was actually attempting to plant Stacy in the industry. This is backed up by the fact that there's not a lot of info about his life prior to 2020 and that the label removed many of his old songs from SoundCloud and YouTube without his permission. 10k Projects is also pretty famous for planting people in the industry, Ian Dore, they even tried to do it with Josiah at one point, but it seems like they don't really stick with their artists long term. They'll try to get them some buzz in the industry, hook them up with big name features, and release a couple albums albums with them, but if they don't do the numbers they want immediately, they seem like they just move on. After all, they have trippy red, so they don't really need to focus on smaller artists. Sadly though, on May 3rd, 2023, the poor Stacy story would take an extremely dark turn, when Stacy would be arrested on charges of domestic battery. This is all alleged, by the way, but there are police reports to back it up. So as the story goes, Stacy was living in Coral Springs with his then-girlfriend Nicole and their child. One day when Stacy was out, his girlfriend would go through his phone and find proof of him cheating. She attempted to confront him when he got home, but this sent Stacy into a violent rage. He would slap and punch Nicole and drag her across the floor by her hair. In the scuffle, Nicole attempted to protect her infant child by taking him into another room, but Stacy would turn his attention to the child and throw his infant son at the wall. Luckily, Nicole was able to catch her child before he could be injured. Stacy's rampage wouldn't stop there because afterwards he would go after his household pets and proceed to beat them. Neighbors in the area ended up calling the police and he was arrested shortly after. He was able to be released on bail, but it seems that Stacy has actually managed to violate the terms of his bail and he's placed back in jail now. In the short time that he was released from jail though, he would take to his Instagram live and attempts to defend himself. I'll play a little bit of that right here. But is that it's not all true in that me and my baby mother did have an altercation, but my son was not involved. And that shows because the charges got dropped.
But as things stand now, it's not looking good for him. Allegedly, that is. We'll have to wait until his trial to fully know the truth, but let's just hope that justice can be served one way or another. With all that said, there's only one question left, and it's why. Why would poor Stacy throw away his healthy rap career and loving relationship to become a woman and child abuser? From what I can see, and a lot of his fans speculate, this all comes down to drug abuse. All of Stacy's songs, he raps and sings about his drug abuse and his life on drugs, which, you know, is cool for the music, but in real life, that's not always the best way to live. He's probably prone to fits of rage, and using drugs can make it worse. Remember guys, it's always better to seek professional help for your mental health issues. I know self-medicating can make you feel better for a time, but all it's going to do is make your problems bigger and it's not going to help you in the long run as over time those drugs are not going to work as well as they first did. The only bright side of the story is that he was caught before he got to the lovely Jay stash. It's not great that this situation happened, but it could have ended a lot worse than it did, so I'm glad that there was responsible people around that were able to stop it before it escalated to that point. So that's it for now guys. If you watched to the end of this video, leave a comment below with the ghost emoji so i know that you did leave your opinion in the comments below subscribe if you like but overall thanks for watching bye